In this guide, I'm going to show you how to set up a subdomain on a Ubuntu server running Nginx. Step one of this process is you need to configure the subdomain to point to your web server. And you're going to do this via your domain provider. In my case, uh, my domain provider is Namecheap.com. So I've currently got that open. And I'm looking at the settings for the domain I'm going to be using for this example, which is codewithsusan.com. I want to create a subdomain here of just demo.codewithsusan.com. So within these settings, I want to find my DNS options. And this is something that every domain provider will have. They'll have some section for your DNS settings. Of course, the interface is going to look a little bit different, but if you dig around, you should be able to find it. And once you find it, you should see the option to create records or configurations for that domain. And amongst these records, you should see a, a record that is like your primary record. It's your address record that is going to indicate which server, which IP address, any traffic to this domain should be pointing to. Now, if you're setting up a subdomain to point to a site on that same server, the record type you want to create is called a CNAME record. It's uh, essentially a alias record. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the host to be whatever our subdomain is. So in my case, that's going to be demo. And then for the target, we're just going to point it to our primary domain, which based on this A record is going to point to our server. So we're basically creating an alias to this record that points to our server. So here for the target, I'm just going to put in my primary domain. Alternatively, let's say the subdomain site I'm creating is on a completely different server than my primary domain. In that case, I would create another A record. I would use the subdomain, and then I would put in the IP address of the server I want this subdomain to point to. And this is the route I'm going to go for this example. So I'm going to paste in the IP address of the server that I set up for this demonstration. And then regardless of the record type you're setting up, the last option is your TTL option. Uh, and we want this change to take effect as soon as possible. So we're just going to choose the minimum time here, which is one minute. I'm going to save those changes. And I want to give those changes a few minutes to take effect. So I'm going to turn my attention now to my server itself, where I'm going to configure it to handle any incoming traffic to my subdomain. Uh, to do this, I'm currently in command line. I am logged into the server in question. And I need to identify where are the files for the site that I'm configuring. Now, in this example, I have not actually created this site yet. So I'm going to create it now. I'm currently in my var www directory, very common location on Nginx servers to put your site files. And within here, I'm just going to create a new directory for this subdomain. So we'll use the make dir command, and I'll just name the directory after the subdomain itself. I'll move into that directory and then just uh, create a index file. I'll create it using nano. And I'll just put some example code in there to get us started. And to save my changes, I'll type Control X, then Y, then Enter. And with that created, we can now configure our subdomain. Uh, and the way we do that on Nginx servers is we are going to create a configuration file within our ETC Nginx sites available directory. And once again, I'll use nano to quickly create this file. I'm going to name the file after the subdomain itself. So it's just going to be demo code with susan.com. And then for my configurations, I'm going to jump over to the notes that accompany this video. I'm going to go down to the section. We're down here under step three, configure the site. We just created our uh, config file within sites available. And this is the config that we want to put inside of it. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in. And then you'll want to skim through here and update uh, the settings as appropriate for your setup. For example, for server name, you would want to change this to whatever subdomain you're configuring. For root, you want to point to the directory of the site that you're configuring. So you can see I had mine pre-filled with that site uh, folder that I had just created a moment ago. Uh, for index, you can indicate what default files it should look for. Basically, when we visit this subdomain, it's going to point to this directory. And within that directory, what file should it look for by default. Uh, and here we have either index.php or index.html. Uh, as you saw when I set this up, I did create an index.html file. So that's what it's going to load when we first go to this subdomain. Um, after that, I do have some configurations. If this is a PHP-based site, this is indicating the uh, PHP service on the server that should be used. Uh, to process the PHP files. Uh, if you're also using PHP, you just want to make sure it is set to the appropriate PHP version that your server is using. 
Um, if you're not using PHP, let's say it's a plain HTML site, you could actually delete this section of code from the configuration. Uh, and then jumping back to the top, the last setting is just what port to listen to. So we're setting this up for basic HTTP requests. We're listening on port 80. Uh, if you wanted to set up HTTPS uh, for this subdomain, that's a whole different configuration. I have a separate guide for that. You can check the video description. I'll include a link. Uh, but this will get us going for basic HTTP traffic. All right, so after you make all of the changes as necessary to this config, we can save our changes. And again, in nano, that is control X followed by Y and then enter. And then finally, with that configuration file created, we need to enable it. And the way we're gonna enable it is by creating a symbolic link from this file to another directory called sites enabled. Uh, the command for that, let's jump back to the notes. We're under step four, activate. We're gonna run this link command or LN. Uh, it's gonna be a symbolic link, so we're including the dash S flag. And we're gonna be linking that fi uh, file that we just created, like I said, over to this sites enabled directory. Um, so again, customize this with whatever subdomain you're using. In my case, it's already pre-filled for this example. So I will copy and run it directly from the notes. And just to confirm that that worked as expected, let's look at the directory contents of sites enabled. And perfect, we can see our alias or our symbolic link uh, here is the file in question, and this is the path uh, that it is actually linking to behind the scenes. Um, and like I said, this is how we enable sites in Nginx. We basically have the config file within sites available, and when we want to activate that config, we symbolically link it to the sites enabled directory. So everything looks good here. Uh, before I restart Nginx to make these changes take effect, uh, it's always a good idea to run Nginx-t where the T is short for test. This is just gonna look for any syntax issues within your configs. Uh, it's looking at your main configs, which are gonna be pulling in these site specific configs. So it's gonna do a check across the board. And in my case, it looks like everything is good there. So let's restart Nginx. We could do that with the system control command. And we're gonna say system control restart Nginx. And let's test it out. I'm gonna go back to my browser, go to demo codewithsusan.com. And perfect, there's that index page I had created. So just to recap, there's two main steps to setting up your subdomains on an Nginx server. First is you've got to create the DNS record for the subdomain. And then on your server, you got to create that config file and make sure it's linked over into sites enabled. Now, if you got to this point and it's not working as expected for you, feel free to leave a comment below explaining the error you're seeing or what the problem is, and I could help point you in the right direction.